somewhere down here is a couple pallets I'm going to use for my solar panel. I grab my shovel. So, those pallets that I had saved are down here somewhere. And I figured two of them might work for my solar panels over here help improve my power a little bit. Now I gotta get to them. And the snow is heavy. I hit one. Well, there might be three. I don't remember what was down there now. It's been under the snow for a while. Got a bad cold front coming in. It's gonna be the last warmish day. Actually, it's cooling off. It started out 27 this morning, got up to 41 a little bit ago, and now it's down back to 36. Uh, winter is not done with me here, I guess. I'm thinking this is big enough and heavy enough. Hopefully I can support two pallets per, or two uh, solar panels per pallet standing upright. Oh, I gotta just find some boards to brace it with. A lot of people are wondering why I'm not building a house anymore. Why don't I build an insulated box for a built room for the battery bank? Well, this is what it looks like everywhere. This is where all my wood looks like. That's a little bit slow going. And look what it takes just to get a pallet. I can free that up. It's heavy enough without that snow load on it. Yeah, that is sturdy. Hopefully enough sun will shine today. Clear that off some for me. I think I 
found the other one. Now, those are going to sit in the sun a while, and uh, hopefully they'll, the snow will come off them. I think I'm going to set them up over against the RV porch, help them better drip off. It means more shoveling. I'll shove myself a path over to there. And then I'm going to take one of these salad trays and bring it in upstairs and start some winter greens in the house. That's the uh, the salad trays that I was using in summer. I've got two of them. Might just shovel them both out and bring them in. See if I can grow some greens upstairs in that big window. <coughs> I might even put a, a, a small table up there to have two tiers. Well, yeah, I might as well do that now. Shovel this out. Been working indoors today. Uh, a lot of sun, so I was using it. Upload videos. I am perplexed about the batteries. I'm not quite sure about the forklift battery. But I think I have a theory. I think the charge controller is reading the. I have a the charge controller hooked up inside the house. I think it's reading the voltage on the wires and not on the battery. I don't know if that'll improve charging or not. If I change that, well, I guess I'm going to find out. I've got to run a wire out. See, the problem is to do anything, you've got to dig out the wood and then you've got to put it somewhere to dry off and to do that you've got a shovel place to dry it I don't think my salad box is gonna move no see that's a dead-end idea uh, I'll have to yeah everything's frozen solid I can't get anything That's a pro. I won't be moving the salad box until it melt. It's frozen to the ground. That is not happening. And uh, these, I've got to stand up against something to, to melt. Now, I'm also working on the, uh, I want to get that other wind turbine up, which means a lot more snow shoveling to get to it. A lot of shoveling. To get to the the tower and clear it off so I can put up that other wind turbine. I want to mount that low on a pole that Neil gave me and see if that'll work. I think it'll work but I gotta get the wiring hooked up for that. Anyway now I've got to look around and see if I can dig up some boards somewhere prop these up on prop the solar panels up on them and uh, see what we can do here. I want to put a ledge on there keep the solar panels off the ground a little. I'll, uh, I think I'll nail a cross piece on there to keep the panels up a couple inches. But it'll be a temporary thing for now at least. I know everything's temporary but eventually this is a truck driveway to the back. So once the snow is melted off everything I can get a little bit more permanent out here because as I said let me explain the overhang. I keep a lot of people are asking me about that. You can see right now the house is getting quite a bit of direct sun and it's only 12 o'clock 
So the sun has only just cleared the tree line anyway, which means over here is only just getting daylight in the first place, okay? So regardless, whether they were getting sun here or look at that, right there on top of that house. Now if I clear these couple trees here, I'll be getting really nice sunlight on that overhang. Now the overhang is going to be a visor, like a, like a sun visor, right along the front of that house, see? Hanging and, and facing the, the south. Now a friend of mine just suggested I have two pieces. So one piece starts here and stops just at that window, and another one starts on the other side and goes to here. That way the summer or the winter sun can still come in that window. I like that idea to give me some light and heat in the winter and still have my passively solar heated house when the sun shines. So these overhangs are going to be like this, okay? And then they're going to be adjustable on actuators so I can catch the sun depending on the time of the year. So that's the idea there because that's the house is not due south, it's south southwest, but it's facing a pretty good direction for catching most of the sun most of the day. And then having a set of panels over here later on a stand facing due south, I'll catch all of the morning sunlight and then here I'll catch all of the midday to afternoon sunlight. I think it'll be good that way. Really good that way. So my wires are all buried. As you can see, it's a winter wonderland here. So I can't get to the wires. So that means I have to do everything new with anything I hook up now, which is what's taken me so long, is trying to get the materials to build this stuff. So, it's... It's a, a lot of work. And as you can see, digging just to get something to get something done. Alright, I'm working on an idea here. Using these pallets. Now the problem, the reason I've never done this before, is the wind damage, the wind danger. So I'm really nervous about doing this and I'm going to have to fasten it securely to the RV. But I've got these somewhat facing the sun as well as I can. Now they're not hooked up, not by a long way. I've got a lot of work to go. Now you'll notice I've got two uh, 200 waters and two 235 waters. So a little bit of difference in size but it won't make a too much, I'll just lose the extra watts on the two big panels when I hook these up together. But then I've got to rig up a wire to connect to the socket over here and run all the way over and then rig up two plugs on the extension cord to plug that in and then go on into the into the tiny house and run two wires into the tiny house and feed that into the solar power connections from those panels out in the meadow. And then eventually once the thaw uh, once we've had the thaw and I can get the wires out, I'll take those and put them up by the house in the same angle as this and fasten them securely to pallets or whatever so they're safe. But I had to go in and rehydrate. Uh, it's pretty hot out today and I wore the wrong, I wore too much clothing. This winter coat is too much. So I want to go in and we'll get back to this in a little bit. In the meantime, actually before my break, I went down to the creek the other day. Sorry, I keep holding the camera down looking at the snow. Oh, speaking of snow, everybody keeps seeing yellow snow everywhere and saying, oh, I know where Troy pees. Well, don't forget, squirrels pee, deer pee, everything pees. And there's yellow snow from, from dirt, from whatever. I'm cleaning some old pots that I had here. Uh, stuff spilling somewhere, like... I don't know what the other was, but here, yellow snow just from walking, from wood, look at that, see, now, well, some people might think I'm peeing in front of my house, but I'm not, just so you know, enough of the yellow snow talk, please, it's everywhere, it happens out here, it doesn't stay pristine, oh, I cleared off my table, and I've got another pan I'm cleaning up, this is one that I never used. I had got this for free out of a junk pile. And one day I plan on using it. There's my wok I want to get in cleaned up. I want to put that on a wood stove and season it. I'm going to take my tank here. I've got my uh, hydrometer i got to clean up. I've been using that. Checking my batteries. 
I think it's the temperature. I do think it's the temperature. But I'm going to put this on here, fill it with water from the creek, and then let it do a test today because it's sunny and warm. And then I'll have my break. All my plans might get cut short. The storm is coming on earlier than I thought. It's getting really dark out there. Uh, might have to change my drain or my uh, water leak test into the bathroom. I didn't want to because of all the weight. I don't want to put all that weight on my bathtub or on my shower floor. Well, I want to go in for my break and then uh, check the weather reports here. Well, I'm wiring this up properly. I have the end that plugs in the extension cord out by the solar panels. So it just plugs right in. And then I'll tape it all up. And I've got the end that'll go into one side of the solar panel array and another end here. Now what do we got here? So this one goes here. This one goes here. sure which is which here I'm confused all right I'm going to take these out and check out the solar panels make sure what's what I had to make sure what was what here nice and proper and correct so that'll go in on there I'll take that end up when I get there and this will go on the other side of the solar panels the new solar panel array now I do know that this is going to be the best solar panel output in my property for this time of year the reason I haven't done this many keep asking me I didn't have the materials I decided to scrap an extension cord, which I'm now doing. So, that'll go out on that end, on the extension cord. I'm going to go hook that up right now outside on the solar panel array. I'll take you out with me. goes here if I did my connections correctly okay nice and good this one I'll hang up for now and this one will go down to the other end you can walk with me if you'd like uh, not sure what you're seeing though I'm just slipping that up and over, running this 
over. Sorry, I don't really know what you're seeing. Here I've got the ends ready to go. Okay, now the panels are hooked up together, okay? They're totally hooked up together together to the panels. Now I'm going to plug in the power line here. Actually, let me push it back further. Can't see if I'm recording or not. It's sunny out. Now I've got the power cord, the extension cord, which is now going to plug into the power outlet here. And then I should have energy out by the other end of this wire so I'm gonna go get my voltmeter and check it out on the other end and make sure I should have almost 130 volts coming through okay looking for the end all right I got it the end of the cord now I won't be able to really show you this easily be a trick if I can even make it myself here. So, DC 200 volts. Let me see what we got. Turn it on. I don't know if you can see that meter. Sorry, I'm running because the day is short. I don't know which is plus and which is minus either. I've got nothing. Oh, here we go. 73, 69, why are you reducing? Huh? That's not cool. Why is it going to zero? Oh, it's varying. There, we got some 132. That was odd. All right, 132 volts. I think my connections isn't weren't. Yeah, I'm not, I don't have good connection here. Okay. So this would be negative, reverse polarity, right? Yeah, okay. Good. So I've got power. Now I've got to get that. I've got to get a wire plugged into this and going inside the tiny house and I'll have more solar power inside the house. Well, the clouds are coming and going so it's going to be hard to show you. I had 150 watts a minute ago, but it's really popping up and down. I, I, I doubled as soon as I plugged in on a cloudy period. I waited for clouds and popped in the second set of solar panels and it doubled. And then it popped up to 150 watts. Now it's really, really fluctuating. You can see it's really cloudy out. And that is why I don't have as good uh, solar as you normally would in a less cloudy situation. So winter here is very cloudy. Even when it's sunny, it's there's a lot of clouds coming and going. Right now, you can look out the bathroom window. Ooh, there. You can see the sun is shining right now, but it's coming and going. So it's fluctuating heavily. But we'll take a look at my gauge. We'll go look at the computer in a minute here and see what the record was for the solar panels how much power I've been pulling in on an average day since I moved the one panel facing towards the south and you will see a difference in improvement in my power since that day now in the following days you're probably going to see a massive more than double improvement in the power in my house so let's go over to the computer and have a look what we got going on I want to try to hold this freehand, so bear with me here and forgive me. You can see me in the reflection. Now, I'm going to zoom in on watt hours, okay, for the last few days. There's 1,050. That was today, but today's not yet complete. I'll probably pull in more. Now, yesterday was 1180. The day before, 1270. There's 20. That was the day it was snowing. And then we had a 340. And a 610, those were cloudy days. There you see 1020, 1100. Now, uh, there's 480, a bad cloudy day. 1100, 20, that was a bad snowy day. There's 1000, 940. Okay, somewhere, now remember 880, 860, that was the average back before I turned the solar panel 
facing south just a little bit I turned one solar panel or two solar panels a pair of solar panels and then you see I went from 880 to 940 to 1000 1100 1100 when it was a bad day like I said snowy days 1270 okay and then yesterday 1180 so I increased my solar panel output a lot by just moving a pair of panels to a different angle into the sun now I've got 1150 today and in, in increasing if I refresh that well, I don't know how fast it adds up so I'm refreshing the screen let's see what happens I've pulled in 73 amp hours today total total usable amp hours today we can go to the live view let me zoom out a little bit on the TriStar charge controller and see what we're pulling in right now see the array voltage is currently only 54 volts so we're not pulling in as much as we could 0.9 amps that's all that's coming through the wires right now 50 volts and 0.9 amps is all that's coming through the wires okay so there one amp so that's not much power coming through the wires now what happens is then we go and we convert it using the MPPT and we've got 8 amps at 13.73 volts see right now we've only got 115 watts which surprises me because the sun is shining again I think my panels over there by the RV are being blocked by the late afternoon shadows from the trees unfortunately so once I move the other panels up to the house, I'm going to see a lot of afternoon sun. Because look at, the sun is shining brightly on the side of the house right now. So that's going to greatly improve my afternoon sunlight power production once I move the other panels. So I've got to clear away, chip away all the ice and snow and slop up against the front of the house and then I can do that. See now the array voltage? Yeah, it's still pretty low. So anyway, gives you an idea of what's going on now that I put on the new solar panels. Around 100 watts. I literally doubled. As soon as I plugged it in, I doubled the power I was bringing in. Which is to be expected. Uh, battery voltage... It's 4 degrees Celsius, whatever that means. So anyway gives you an idea T tomorrow we'll come back and we'll check near the end of the day what the maximum total power production was for the entire day and my guess is going to be about double if not triple of what I've been bringing in let's see it's driving me crazy to now have the new solar panels up against the RV and the old solar panels out in the meadow, both all in shade. And then all the sun is up here in front of the tiny house on wheels, shining fully on the side of the house. I've got to get those other panels moved right away. So now I'm going to look for a 25-foot extension cord with a higher gauge wire, um, thicker wire, which will be a little cheaper. And then I'm going to run up solar panels in front of this house. But I've got to chop and chisel everything away first yeah, before I can even do that because all the snow and ice and stuff up against the house but then when I get some serious afternoon sunlight really good